Good morning, here we are in Hong Kong. It's a beautiful day. We're here to record episode four of 852 Reboot Hong Kong. And I am here with Minesh Poor, who is the head of Startup Launchpad and international at Global Sources. So over to you, Minesh. Hi, thank you, good morning. Good morning. Very excited about the program here. Excellent, so what brought you to Hong Kong? Uh, this is my second time in Hong Kong. The first time, it was uh, it was this interesting opportunity with Global Sources, which was launching trade shows uh, for the first time in Hong Kong in 2006. Uh, and they were looking for people who could bring in international exhibitors to Hong Kong, especially in the areas of fashion and electronics and gifts. And that's what brought me here. That was my background. They found me. I was working in Shanghai that time is when they found me and uh, brought me here. Uh, second time around, uh, they were they had launched Startup Launchpad, they were reorganizing the company. It is just before it got bought by Blackstone and uh, those were the days that they were looking at making some major internal uh, reorgs and that's when they rehired me uh, from London that time in 2016. And if, you, if you're, I mean, the startup part of your job I'm very curious about is you know, you see a lot of uh, obviously startups, and I presume a lot of the ones that come your way are hardware looking for manufacturing. Do you think that you know, if you're a startup looking to make products, Hong Kong is the right place to be? Because obviously, you just you know, half an hour away, you've got tons of factories. You've yeah. got where, where, where? You know, how do you see that being uh, a benefit? Uh, you, you're again exactly right because Hong Kong is at the doorsteps of Shenzhen. Shenzhen is where all the prototyping, the tooling, the manufacturing, all of that, you can get it done in Hong Kong for all kinds of hardware startups. If you're doing your molds, if you're doing your prototyping, there is no other place in the world that is as efficient, not just because of the cheap pricing, but also because of the efficiency of turning things around in a quick uh, one week, 10 days turnaround time, and which is very important in a startup environment. If you are spending, uh, I'll give you an example. I've come through to startups from Europe which have needed three to three to six months to just get their molds right. While they come to China, they send spend maybe a week or 10 days in Shenzhen finding their tooling partner and two more weeks to get the molds right. And they're done. So in a month's time, they go so back speed. with the mold. It's the speed. It's the speed really. and the efficiency. And, and it is, of course, less expensive than the Western world. My God. So what do you actually do? You've got two titles. So what, what do you actually do at Global Sources? Are you split down the middle? You're a busy man. Uh, yeah. So w one of the responsibilities is Startup Launchpad. Startup Launchpad is a trade show for helping IoT, hardware, startups to connect with uh, retailers, wholesalers, importers. We strongly believe that hardware startups are very hard. And the, ha the only way hardware startups grow is by connecting them with retailers, wholesalers who buy the products from them, who will enhance the uh, en enhance the distribution networks. So we try and introduce them to uh, to those retailers, wholesalers, two times a year in Hong Kong um, every April and October. And the second part of my job is international. So Global Sources has magazines, online, uh, tra other trade shows, uh, which we organize in Hong Kong, in Brazil, in, in Indonesia, and so on and so forth. Um, and for all the different products, we have sales teams in the US, in Japan, in Korea, in India, in Malaysia, in Philippines, in Singapore, um, in Australia, and so on and so forth. And all the country managers reporting to me for that business. So you're, you're striding two things. You've got the traditional business and you've got the, the kind of startup world. Yeah. Um, I mean, Global Sources, you know, many years ago was a startup itself, right? I remember when they sent out uh, CD-ROMs yes. with lists of factories in China. Yeah. Where do you see the whole, you know, the startup world here in Hong Kong? Because you're, you're very deeply involved in it, um, as am I. Where, where do you see the startup world going? I mean, we're, we're a center of finance. Uh, we're a center of travel. Yeah. Uh, trade, uh, your old business, textiles. Yeah. Where, where do you? What's the strength of Hong Kong in, in terms in terms of startups? So, if if you look at um, and, and you said it right, you define the four or five categories that Hong Kong is strong in, and those are the traditional businesses, right? The finance industry, the logistics, and the trade industry, the tourism industry, and the startups in Hong Kong. If you see, majority of them 
already that have happened have been either in the logistics space or the finance space. There is still a lot of room in the trade space. There is not so much that has happened in the trade arena into the um, into the arena which actually fueled Hong Kong in the 80s to now and that would that would start coming up. Uh, I always feel, I mean, now that we are, we're talking today when the situation has been the worst forever in the last uh, two weeks, um, I, I still have a very strong belief that Hong Kong's gonna bounce back. Hong Kong's got a very strong economy uh, and it's gonna come back. The people are very resilient. No matter what happens with this revolution, what no matter what happens with the protest, they are going to come back. The second thing is that in the startup arena, we can see that there is a lot of money that is available in Hong Kong, capital that needs to be uh, deployed, which doesn't find good homes yet. And also, they are hungry. If you look at the family offices, the angels, the uh, the individual investors that are there in Hong Kong, they all come up out of the backgrounds of logistics they come out of the backgrounds of trade they come out of the not so much actually finance industry doesn't pull in so many of those investors and angels but i have seen them come from manufacturing trade and logistics and those people can understand investing in those sectors or startups that come out of that sector so there is a lot of opportunity that that arises in hong kong and i think uh, startups from around the world should not uh, worry about the situation that is there in hong kong it's going to come back and they should come to hong kong take advantage of the situation the money as well as the access to the chinese market and there's, there's a lot of talk about um hong kong becoming part of this you know what used to be called the pearl river delta the, the Greater Bay, Greater Bay area. Uh, area. I prefer Pearl River Delta. But what? Um, where do you see the role of Hong Kong in that? Because it it seems like you know across the border we have tech parks, we have manufacturers. What's lacking maybe is the finance, the kind of infrastructure. Where I mean, you deal with this a lot, right? You're in a very yeah. practical business. So yeah. where do you see that that uh, that you know Hong Kong's role within that? So. Well, few things uh, when you look at Hong Kong the let's let's talk about the pros and the cons cons of Hong Kong right Hong Kong the biggest pro is that it is still an open market the banking system is very easy you as an international uh, startup or a businessman coming here setting up your bank account still relatively easy as compared to doing it in uh, in China the visas uh, getting here with your you know, international so most countries can get in pretty easily into Hong Kong most countries need a visa to China so that, it's not that difficult to get the visa but it is a hassle and people get single entry double entry visas into China so it's very difficult to go and explore and understand the business the third part is that the language Hong Kong you still can get away with English you can't get away with just English in China you will need a Chinese speaking staff you need a Chinese translator for everything that you do and especially if you're a startup you need to have the ease of moving around and doing things quickly which gets slow in China um, and I don't blame China for that that's how it is right but Hong Kong the advantage of the Greater Bay Area or the Pearl River Delta whatever you call it is that Hong Kong will be in a position to become a market access to the rest of China or enter into China through the ports of Shenzhen or Zhuhai or Macau or Guangzhou, whatever you call. All of these are in an hour distance of Hong Kong uh, on all kinds of transportation. So I think that's the biggest value that Hong Kong has. On the cons, what Hong Kong doesn't have is the market size, but that can be balanced out with the advantage of the Pearl River Delta again, that you get access to that entire population. What's the first thing you would like to promote? It could be about yourself, it could be about your company, it could um, be our beautiful city. I, what, what would you like to plug? I, I surely want to plug the beautiful city, right? We all live in a very disturbing time that we are going through. But I was just talking to somebody, I'm telling them that this is history being made. We are part of history. How you make out of it, the opportunities you can see out of it is up to you. And I see a lot of opportunity for Hong Kong. And the, the second plug? Uh, the second plug is again for the Hong Kong ecosystem, the startup ecosystem that I am so passionate about. Uh, like I said before, there is a lot of capital that stays for being deployed. There's a very good infrastructure system that has been built. Uh, our friends in Invest HK have done a good job in trying to bring in the starting up HK festival here, uh, building up the infrastructure for making it easy for startups to set up here. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye, Manesh. Thank you.